Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, as every morning, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we do come before you each and every morning to first and foremost thank you for this preservation of life that you have allowed each and every one of us to experience. Lord, time and time again, we are shown the evidence that no one is promised tomorrow. And yes, this brings us grief when it's someone close to us, one of our loved ones um, or somebody in our family, our friends, anyone that we care for in this world, when they do leave this world, yes, it does grieve our souls and we do mourn for them. But this is what we pray for each and every person this morning, is that we come to know you, that our family, our friends, our loved ones, everyone comes to know you and to serve you in spirit and in truth. So that in the day that we, any one of us do depart from this earth, dear Lord, we shall be confident and glad that we shall see them again in your eternal kingdom to come. Because yes, this life is but a vapor, and death is what is guarantee but as we know if we continue in you the gift of god is eternal life through christ jesus and this is what we pray for not just for ourselves but for every single soul that we love and care for our family our friends our loved ones and for all those who proclaim the name of jesus we do pray that we all are gathered together in that day to come in your eternal kingdom having eternal life and that eternal body in which we shall experience no more pain no more grief no more sin no more evil nothing of the sort shall exist in us or with us ever again so this is the confidence that we have in you so dear lord this morning as we partake in your word we just pray as every morning that whilst we read it we are reverencing it we are acknowledging that this is the word of the living god i can't express how great this is and how, what a honor and pleasure it is to know that you have left us good instruction so that we can traverse this life in the righteousness found in you lord jesus christ so help us on this walk as always we don't put our confidence in ourselves nor in our own strength we rely solely on you and you have said you shall never leave us nor forsake us so this is what we ask this morning that you abide with us and we with you so we can finish this course of life having not attained the righteousness found in you lord jesus christ and bring pleasure to our heavenly father as you have taught us and dear lord yes through the tests and trials on this walk we do pray that we are overcomers as always Lord, when our soul is low in within us with heaviness, I just pray that we remember and acknowledge your word that says you shall take our burden from us if we come unto you because you care for us, dear Lord. We shall cast it on you and you are more than willing and able to bear it. Keep this in the mind of every person this morning that is feeling no that is feeling depressed, that is feeling anguish or grief or any such thing. Build us up, strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and instruct us, edify us, encourage us by your word, Lord Jesus Christ. And let us also do this in the lives of the children. Um, yes, they are innocent in it all. I just pray that we are raising them up in that truth of who you are lord jesus christ because even now children are experiencing all of these adult things and we know that the devil is trying his best to pick them off from the youth so that they do not know you or serve you but we know you and we serve you and we pray that we lead them up and grow them up in the knowledge and truth of who you are so when they're of age they shall never neglect or reject you lead us therefore in spirit and in truth in your word this morning to the glory of god our heavenly father in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Alrighty. So Proverbs chapter 3, 3 and 4 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. 
bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favour and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Amen. All right, mercy. Mercy is a word that we see used right throughout the scripture, right? We see that God is a merciful God. Why is God a merciful God? We have countless examples of his mercy. The biggest one is the, the love that he has shown for us um, whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is love. This is mercy, right? This is our God being who he is. He said he is love, right? And it is important because God did tell us, right? Be ye holy as the Lord your God is holy. He said that in the Old Testament and he said that in the New Testament, right? And why is it so? Because as we were talking about yesterday, um, it is it would be very hypocritical for we to acknowledge God and want the, the, the pleasant things of God. And yet still we are unable to show that same love that God showed us, that same mercy that God has shown us to our fellow mankind. It would be a hypocrite, right? And there's one parable that Jesus showed. Um, I, I can't remember which one of the Gospels, maybe Luke or something, I can't remember. But when he was showing about that person who owed his master like an exorbitant amount of, of money, like in today's day, it would just be unfavorable unfathomable for somebody to work to pay that off right you you're completely indebted to this person right and um the the servant went and plead unto the master and the master forgave him everything right imagine that suppose he just even owe somebody one billion pounds just one billion pounds right me now me not see one billion pounds in my hand so that sounds a lot right and you have to pay that person back. And you say, boy, how am I going to pay back this person on one billion pounds? How am I going to work that off? And that person say, you know what? Forget about that. Don't you? We, we can call it squits, right? All right. You can see how great that would be for, for that person to forgive you of that. And then if you think now, you go off and then your fellow brother now owe you five pound, right? Five pound right and you now do wickedly and say no entreat that person wickedly and cast him into prison and say no that person owe me five pound let him go to jail right he's a thief <laughs> right <laughs> we see how hypocritical you will be right and that parable went on to show that the master heard of it and he wasn't pleased and he he, he told that they told that servant no you have to pay me back everything because you were, you were so unrighteous in your judgment Imagine now, God Almighty has forgave us the in unpayable sum of sin, right? We couldn't pay for sin of ourselves, right? He has forgiven us the unpayable sum of sin through Christ Jesus. If we accept the payment through Christ Jesus and abide in him, let me just make them disclaimers, right? Imagine now if your fellow person, your fellow man sin against you, should we not have mercy enough to forgive that person right you see what i mean this is what i wanted to just express based on this truth is christ jesus so mercy and truth cannot forsake us truth is what we're going to use to discern and to lead our lives and this is through christ jesus jesus himself said i am the way the truth and the life no one cometh cometh unto the father but by me right so if we have these things we are showing the characteristics of God, right? God is truth because in him there is no lie or untruth at all, right? And as I said, if we do these things, bind them about our neck, write them upon the table of our heart, right? We'll show you how close, in close proximity we should have it to ourselves, right? Then shall we find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man, right? God shall reverence. Let me say reverence. He shall uphold those ones who do righteously before him, right? He shall not suffer our feet to be moved. And, right, mankind automatically will know that there's something different about this person. And then in that, we can point them back to the true author 
and finisher of our faith, right? The merciful and true God, the one true God who has shown himself in the, in the form of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'll leave it at that this morning. You can drop some little comments about some things most because mercy, mercy have a lot more um, depth to it. So you can drop some things in the comment section um, or you can send them into the word at eachreachone.org. And as much as the Lord has led me and taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, be led by his Holy Spirit. So have a blessed day, everyone. And God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.